No worries. I won't hurt sword. you. Ask your question. Sarah. I can take you to Old Evanhart or Dean aboard my ship, Summer Lightning. I am never too busy. Welcome to VBAC, Ada. I'm Jindral Anethri. Are you looking for services in the Sacred City? Maybe I can help. Yes, Outlander, what may I do for you? Devis Irono the Gondolier. What is your- I can carry you by gondola to the arena in the center of Vivac, or to Guala Comp- Welcome to Vivac, Ada. I'm Vla- Counselor Crassius Curio has a splendid mansion in the plaza atop the Hualo Canton here in Vivac. Where is that slave? Well, if you are the Nereverin, why haven't you fulfilled the prophecies? Surely you haven't forgotten. You haven't done something foolish, have you? You mustn't be shy, dumpling. I've heard that Archcanon Tholar Suryoni, the High Priest of the Temple, is very upset, and that he is hoping that you will come speak with him at the High Fane here in Vivac City. Maybe that would be a good idea. Don't you think? Three blessings, Sarah. Three blessings, Sarah. I'm Aaron Marin the Gondolier. What is your destination? Yes, Outlander, what may I do? Ada. You claim to be the Nereverin. The Red Party of Redoran preserves the ancient martial traditions of our ancestors and deserves our thankful respect. I am never too... Thank you for coming, Ada. You know the temple's doctrine on the Nereverin. Perhaps it is time to change that doctrine. You are the one they call the Nereverin. You are a heretic, and all who support you are heretics. 
You may think imperial law protects heretics, and you may be right, but some of the temple faithful care little for imperial law. The temple must protect the people from false doctrines. And your association with imperial intelligence makes your motivations and integrity suspect. But we have reached a crisis with Dagathur. We can no longer defend the people against the awakened sixth house. You and your prophecies may represent our last hope. Our situation is desperate. But I would rather have you hear the details of our situation, and the circumstances leading up to that situation, from Lord Vivek himself. He has asked to see you. Would you agree to a private meeting with him, and hear in person what he has to say? Good. Here are two keys, one to the private back entrance to my quarters, the other to a locked entrance to Lord Vivek's palace. I regret that, at present, the ordinators are not completely under my control, so, for now, I'll ask you to avoid confrontations with them. Lord Vivek is expecting you. His lordship is remarkably patient, but perhaps it would be better not to keep him waiting. Vivek was the most gallant knight and the most subtle rogue of the first council. A warm welcome to you. What brings you to the temple, adept? Have you been lax in your duties? The most important people in the temple compound are Archcanon Sir Yoni at the High Fane, Beryl Sala in the Justice Offices, and Elamandas in the Office of the Watch. I am blessed to be at your service, Outlander. You've spoken to the Archcanon? Good. Then, is there anything else you want? I expected you. We have business, you and I. When I was young like you, I was very impatient. So I will keep our business short. Then, later, there may be time for other things. First, I propose to remove my curse upon the Nereveran, and the persecution of the dissident priests, and proclaim to all Morrowind that Ada is the incarnate in Nereveran, the prophesied savior of Morrowind, and the last hope to withstand the menace of Dagathur and the Sixth House. These things I will do, whether you wish or not. Next, I propose to surrender to you the power and responsibility of defeating Dagathur. You may choose to refuse, I will not compel you. You will receive the power as a gift, in the form of an artifact called Wraithguard. You may accept the gift, then do with it as you will. You will receive the responsibility as an oath. You may give your oath, then keep it or break it as you like. First, will you accept Wraithguard as a gift? Good. Sensible of you. And now, will you give your oath, before all gods and men, before all spirits visible and invisible, before my honor and your honor, to dedicate yourself and Wraithguard to the defeat and destruction of Dagathur, and the preservation of Morrowind and its people? Not very sensible. But very good. I was hoping for someone who would have no hesitations about making such an oath. You will now have a brief, momentary sensation of time passing. Don't be alarmed. You are being taken out of time in order to avoid the unpleasant experience of learning how to use Wraith Guard. It will be over before. There is a brief sensation of motion in total darkness, floating, but without a sense of weight or direction you know it. Now. I will notify the temple that you are our champion. 
There shall be no more persecution of the dissident priests, and I hope both sides shall swiftly be reconciled. We have time for questions, if you like. Or you may leave, as you wish. But I think there are at least two things you ought to know before you leave, how to use Wraithguard, and how to defeat Dagathur. You need to know, where is Dagathur? What are Dagathur's plans? Who are Dagathur's servants? Who is Dagathur? What are Dagathur's powers? What is known about Dagathur's defenses? How can I prepare for battle against Dagathur? Who can help? Dagathur is the former Lord High Counselor of House Dagath. He was of Lord Narivar's generation, older than we, and a mighty sorcerer and enchanted in life. In his sustained shadow immortality, he appears to be a highly intelligent, severely deluded immortal monster with unparalleled supernatural abilities. He appears, by turns, lucid and deranged, compassionate and bestial, profoundly wise and profoundly disordered. In short, he is a mad god. Actually, I believe we've finished our business. I will notify the temple that you are our champion. There shall be no more persecution of the dissident priests, and I hope both sides shall swiftly be reconciled. Now you are my guest, I am your host, and we have time for explanations. Or counsel. Or questions. Or bitter recriminations, if you like. Or you may leave, if you wish. As you wish. But I think before you leave you should hear how to defeat Dagathur, and how you must use the artifact Wraith Guard. You want to chide me, why did I murder Narivar? Why did I break my oath to Azure and not to use Kibranax tools? Why did I cause others to suffer? Along with Lord Narivar, and at his insistence, all Malexia, Suthasil, and I swore before our god of oaths at the time, the Dedra Lord Azure, never to employ the tools of Kibranax for any purpose. We broke our oaths. We turned our backs on the old gods. I still see no compelling reason to worship any of the Dra or Dedra. But, for the respect I held for Narivar, and the respect I held for myself, I should never have betrayed my oath. Of all my life's actions, I most regret that failure. Why did I cause others to suffer? I respect that question, and you for it. The most I can say is, I did the best I could, as I saw things. Can you, mortal, presume to judge the actions and motives of a god? But, because I need you, and you need me, I will make an accounting for my sins, to you. But not now. Destroy Dagathur, and then we will discuss my sins. Then, perhaps, you will have earned the right to judge me. You need to know, where is Dagathur? What are Dagathur's plans? Who are Dagathur's servants? Who is Dagathur? What are Dagathur's powers? What is known about Dagathur's defenses? How can I prepare for battle against Dagathur? Who can help? Confer with the Ordinators and Buoyant Armagers garrisoning Ghost Gate for the latest information about the defenses of the Citadels of Dagathur and his heart white kin. We know nothing for sure, but we have learned much from interrogating Sixth House cultists and victims of dream compulsions and from our study of Dagathur's actions. The temple scholars and inquisitors have prepared a document, Dagathur's plans, that summarizes what we know or suspect. Take this copy. It's also available in my library. He is able to send his mind into the dreams of susceptible victims across vast distances. The victims are either swayed by his compulsions or driven mad. He also seems nearly invulnerable to physical and magical harm. His flesh, and the flesh of his followers, evolves towards a mutable, magical form. Dagathur and the highest ranks can control the distorted manifestations of their flesh, lower ranks lose control of their bodies, and become mindless corpus monsters. Chief among his servants are his seven brothers, the Ash Vampires, powerful heart whites and cunning sorcerers of old. These creatures appear to die, but always are revived at the heart. Somehow Dagathur has conferred some portion of his immortality upon them. 
or perhaps they sustain themselves through more conventional sorcery. To defeat Dagathur, go to Red Mountain to recover the artifact Hammer Sunder from Gate Citadel Veminal, then recover the artifact Blade Keening from Gate Citadel Adrosal. Then proceed with Wraith Guard, Sunder, and Keening to the Citadel of Dagathur. Within the Citadel, find the Heart of Lork Han. Use the three artifacts to sever Dagathur's connection to the Heart, and he will be destroyed, and the Blight ended on Mora Wind. To destroy Dagathur, you must sever his connection with the Heart of Lork Han. To do this, strike the Heart with the artifact Hammer Sunder once, then strike the Heart more than once with the artifact Blade Keening. You must wear Wraith Guard, because you cannot handle either Sunder or Keening unless you are wearing Wraith Guard. That is the short, simple explanation. Here is the long, detailed explanation, written down for your convenience. Read it, study it, commit it to memory. You want to know, why did I wage war on the Nerevaran? Why did I try to suppress the Apigrapha? Why did I persecute the dissident priests? Why is Dagathur winning the war? How does the tribunal fight Dagathur? What are Wraith Guard's powers? Dagathur is winning because he is close to the source of power, Lorcan's heart. And because he retains the passion of madness, while we have settled into the lonely and unrewarding posture of dogged dutifulness and perseverance. And, finally, perhaps because he is stronger and smarter than we are, and his followers are more fervent and fanatical. I believe we were careless and complacent, and outwitted. And, in the matter of denying the Nerevaran, we were foolish. We did not murder Nerevar. The legend that we murdered Nerevar comes from a story told by a shield companion to Nerevar, Alandrosol, who lived among the Ashlanders. The Ashlanders have retained Alandrosol's account as part of their oral histories. The account is persuasive in some details, implausible in others, and is in any case false. I have two accounts of Nerevar's death here in my library. Read them, and judge for yourself. I want your trust, and willing cooperation. So I've had the priests make copies of a number of documents. They're here for you to read or take with you. Take a look at them. Help yourself. Suppression and persecution of dissent is just one of the standard tools of statecraft. I believe we erred in trusting the judgment of Beryl Sala. He and his ordinators served valiantly in the war against Dagathur. We mistook his misplaced zeal for energy and dedication. Mistakes were made. But no more. There shall be no more persecution of the dissident priests, and I hope both sides shall swiftly be reconciled. Prepare for war. Beyond the ghost fence, there are no safe places, no allies. Stockpile resources. Plan for retreat and replenishment. Quest for artifacts of power. You are curious, what really happened at Red Mountain? What really happened to the Dwemer? What was the Dwemer's sin? What is it like to be a god? Do I remember being mortal? How do I feel about the people of Mora Wind? The sin of the Dwemer was the creation of a new god from the substance of a dead god, Lork Han. That is also the sin for which we would destroy Dagathur. I hesitate to call it sin. More properly, call it destructive evil. The sin of the tribunal, however, is in the breaking of an oath to Azura to forbear from tapping the heart with Kigranax tools, and in the folly of seeking to become gods. Breaking the oath was evil. Becoming gods was folly. If we sinned, we have paid the price. I love the people of Mora Wind. I became a god to make their lives more comfortable and secure. I am most close to my faithful followers, I am literally in their hearts and minds. I feel the most sympathy with House Redoran, they are Dunmer driven by creeds and deeds, like I am. House Indoril is closer to the compassion and sympathy of all Malexia, a comfortable and secure serenity. 
House Telvani matches the disposition of my brother Suthasil iconoclastic, profane, unconventional. House Hlalu represents the future of the Dunmer, integrated into the sophisticated mainstream of the traditionless, raceless, godless culture of the Empire. House Dras represents the past of pre-tribunal Great House culture, a persistent tradition of Didra and ancestor-worshipping civilized Dunmer clans. And I even love the Ashlanders for their preservation of the most ancient barbarian tribal traditions of the Dunmer who first settled Mora Wind. In my library, I have made available two conflicting accounts of the events of Red Mountain, my own true account, and another false account common among the Ashlanders and preserved in the Apographa. I don't care whether you believe my account or not. I leave it up to you to judge which is true. I remember. I do not feel it. I can, if I choose, remember the feeling. But I do not choose. It is very, very sad being mortal. There is happiness, yes. But mostly sadness. As I have said, count only the happy hours. For mortals, they are all too few. But for gods for me there is no more feeling. Only knowing. Pause. Not quite no more feeling. I still want to win. I want to defeat Dagathur. Perhaps I have lost the feeling for the people, for their suffering. I don't want that feeling. It is no use to me. That is no longer what matters to me. I only want not to lose. To lose would be very, very bitter. Why did I suppress the apographa? Because it was such an unfortunate mixture of truth, falsehood, and speculation that I couldn't afford to manage the confused reaction of our faithful. Any doubt whatsoever weakened their faith, and we needed their faith to give us the power to maintain the ghost fence. In retrospect, perhaps we lost the faith of those we most needed while preserving the faith of the meek and indifferent. Perhaps a mistake was made. Who can say? I have no idea what happened to the Dwemer. I have no sense of them in the timeless divine world outside of mortal time. And, in fact, if I did believe they existed, I would be in no hurry to make contact with them. They may, with some justice, hold the Dunmer race responsible for their fate. My intuition is that they are gone forever and that is perfectly fine with me. It is like being a juggler. Things are always moving and you learn to know where they are without even thinking about it. Only there are many, many things moving. And sometimes, like any juggler, you drop something. I'm afraid it has become a lot more a matter of dropping things lately. There's too much to do, and not enough time, and I'm losing my touch. Perhaps I'm growing old. It is a bit like being at once awake and asleep. Awake, I am here with you thinking and talking. Asleep, I am very, very busy. Perhaps for other gods, the completely immortal ones, it is only like that being asleep. Out of time. Me, I exist at once inside of time and outside of it. It's nice never being dead, too. When I die in the world of time, then I'm completely asleep. I'm very much aware that all I have to do is choose to wake. And I'm alive again. Many times I have very deliberately tried to wait patiently, a very long, long time before choosing to wake up. And no matter how long it feels like I wait, it always appears, when I wake up, that no time has passed at all. That is the God place. The place out of time, where everything is always happening, all at once. In the past, the tribunal made seasonal campaigns to Red Mountain. We slew Dagathur and his kin, though the heart always revived them in time. Later, when we realized we couldn't destroy them, we created the ghost fence to contain the threat. These solutions were effective until Dagathur ambushed us and captured Sunder and Keening. Since that time, our fortunes have waned as his increased. Why did I try to kill you? Because you threatened the faith of my followers, and I needed their faith to hold back the darkness. And I thought you were my enemy a pawn of the subtle Didra Lord Azura, or a pawn of Emperor Uriel Septim, or a simple fraud perhaps a hero but not much of one if my faithful could destroy you. 
Now circumstances are altered. I need you, and you need me. Dagathor has never ventured out of the heart chamber, the place under Red Mountain where the heart of Lorcan lies. It is there, or nearby, that he is constructing a new god, Akula Khan, also known as Second Numidium. Ordinators and buoyant armagers stationed at Ghost Gate have the most practical knowledge of the nightmare world inside the ghost fence. Seek them in my name for counsel and aid. Wraith Guard's primary function is to protect the wearer from the fatal energies of the artifacts Sunder and Keening. It also has minor protective enchantments against physical and magical damage that you may find useful. Portator and Nereveran. I have been named Nereveran by four tribes of the Ashlanders. Of the seven visions of seven trials of the Incarnate, I have now fulfilled the fifth trial. Crassius Curio seemed concerned that I had not fulfilled the Nereveran prophecies. He says that Archcanon Sir Yoni hopes I will come speak with him at the High Fane in Vivac City. Archcanon Sir Yoni has suggested that the temple's policy concerning the Nereveran might change and has arranged a private meeting with Lord Vivac. He gave me two keys, one to the private back entrance to his quarters, the other to a locked entrance to Lord Vivac's palace. He says the ordinators are not under his control, and asks that I avoid them. Lord Vivac is expecting me, and perhaps I shouldn't keep him waiting. I accepted Wraithguard from Lord Vivac, and I swore my oath, before all gods and men, before all spirits visible and invisible, before my honor and Vivek's honor, to dedicate myself and Wraithguard to the defeat and destruction of Dagathur, and the preservation of Morrowind and its people. Vivek somehow taught me how to use Wraithguard. He then offered to give some explanations, or to let me go immediately, as I wished. To defeat Dagathur, Vivek says I must go to Red Mountain to recover the artifact Hammer Sunder from Gate Citadel Veminal then the artifact blade keening from gate citadel Audrosal. Then, with these artifacts and wraith guard, if I destroy the enchantments on the heart of Lorcan in Dagathur's citadel, Dagathur will be destroyed, and the blight ended. Vivek gave me the plan to defeat Dagathur to explain the details.